Welcome back to the CS Podcast. I am your host, Chris Shanfell, and I'm now joined by 2014 NFL Draft Prospect, wide receiver out of Central State University, Davon Ross. Thanks for joining the show, Davon. How's it going? Everything is going well, man. Thanks for having me. Hey, it's a, it's a true pleasure, and I just want to give our listeners a little bit of information on your uh, background as you grew up in a not-so-great neighborhood in South Los Angeles where you were surrounded by uh, gangs, violence, and drugs. Uh, you were raised by a single mother who was also taking care of your nine other siblings. Uh, I guess I'll just lead up to my first question, and that, that first question for you, Davon, is when and why did you start playing football? Okay, uh, well, I started playing football when I was around seven years old for uh, Pop Warner Football, the Los Angeles demos, and uh, my my mom, she's actually, like, she had a lot of, she had a lot of time on her hands, and, you know, she was dealing with a lot of kids, so she actually met one of the coaches at a grocery store, and she, and, and he asked her, like, did she have any, um, uh, sons and she like yeah I have four boys and uh, she he was uh, he told her like you know like bring them out to play football you guys don't have to pay anything uh, just bring them out and at that moment that's when I fell in love with football and I knew that's what I wanted to do. I see during your high school days you played under three different head coaches, only won two games in the three years that you played, uh, but just because your team doesn't have a whole lot of success doesn't mean that you personally can't have success. Uh, during your senior year, you caught about 67 passes, 930 yards, and eight touchdowns. Uh, you drew interest from UCLA. You intended to attend UCLA until you were informed that you were missing some English courses and was ruled ineligible. Uh, can you just take us through that moment and tell us what what you know? What was going through your mind when you received all this news? Oh uh, man! Well, you know, I was I was overly excited that I was going to a Pac-12 school. You know, that's that's why I wanted that's why I wanted to be. You know, and it was um, you know, I had so I had offers from other schools like Arizona State and like different schools, but I personally wanted to stay home and go to UCLA. And uh, you know, I was excited about that time. You know, I'm I'm, I'm doing what I want to do. I'm staying home for college, you know. Then I, I get the news that, uh, you know, some of my classes was in, uh, I mean, I was missing classes from uh, from our uh, high school and things like that. But uh, I, I was devastated after I found out, you know, that I, I wasn't going to attend you see, Like, you know, I couldn't sleep. Like, you know, I couldn't eat. You know, it was just crazy. And during your freshman year of college, you decided to attend L.A. Southwest College, and uh, you were working at a grocery store as well as taking care of your daughter. Uh, you know, adding football to that agenda seems pretty tough, and, you know, I just got to ask you, during that time, did you ever think that your football career had come to an end? Yes, oh, yes, yeah. Uh, well, when I, when I got to the community college, you know, I, I noticed that a lot of guys wasn't taking football serious. It was just something to do while they was in school, and it was a lot of guys like that. So I kind of, that's how I wind up working at a grocery store because I, I thought it was, like, unreal, you know, like, man, like, people don't really make it out from these kind of schools and things like that. So at that point, I... I'm thinking, like, you know, I'm going to play football, but it's just there, like, just for me to play while I play this school. Mm-hmm. And I, I see during the next year you you would then uh, transfer to East L.A. College to focus mainly on your academics, and that was when you received an offer from the University of Virginia. You would end up taking that offer and commit to Virginia, but uh, here comes another speed bump your way, and uh, you are told that, some of your online courses that you're taking at East LA were uh, non-transferable and that you're unable to attend Virginia. Now, Davon, after all of this, uh, how did you go on and keep fighting to achieve your dream after being shut down, you know, so many times? And, you know, it, it just seems like, you know, looking at your story and looking back, that it, it just seems like it wasn't meant to be. How did you keep on fighting through and, you know, how, how are you uh, trying to achieve your dream after all of this? Well, yeah, um, well, when I when I got the news about the uh, the Virginia thing, like you know, it was just it, it shot me down again. Like you said, like it was it was hard, it was hard to overcome that way, you know, because for the simple fact is that I worked hard again to really be shut down again, and you know, and like when I was talking to them, you know, they was excited for me to come. I was gonna play right away and everything, and like you know, I had all my eggs in this basket. And when they told me that, you know, it was just like, oh man, but you know what? Like I kept God first, 
I kept God first and I kept like believing in my talent to go anywhere and make an impact. So that's how that's how I got through that situation. I knew if I had given a chance again that I would overcome it. It seems like we're just focusing on a lot of uh, bad news that have come your way, Davon. But uh, you know, uh, eventually there was an opportunity that uh, came up where you were able to attend Central State uh, Central State University, and you're able to play football there. Can you tell us how that opportunity came up? Yeah, well, basically after I got the news about um, Virginia, you know, I had a couple of weeks to try to find a school to go to. And, you know, I had the film, I had everything, had the stats. So when I was sending out my video to all, all different kind of school, you know, I couldn't go D1AA because they had the uh, same requirements as uh, D1. So my, um, it was either D2, D3, or NAIA. So when I, when I, when I was sending out my tape, I mean, a lot of schools, a lot of schools was emailing me back. I was talking to a lot of different schools. I didn't, I didn't, I couldn't quite make a decision until I finally talked to Central State. And when I talked to Central State, I noticed that everyone else was talking about only just football, just pure football, nothing else but football. And when I talked to Central State Coach Junior, um, he, first of all, Coach Junior was a first round draft pick. He played at um, Alabama and he got drafted to, uh, I want to say, I forgot what team he got drafted to, but he was a first round draft pick. His name is EJ Junior. And plus we had a, 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 at Central State, we had an offensive coordinator. He was one of the best tight ends in um, all, all of the nation. In, in the NFL, like one of the top guys, his name was uh, Coach Coates, uh, uh, Dean Coates. And, uh, you know, when I talked to them guys, like, they they, they always told me, like, all right, all right, education come first. Like, you know, football is there, and yeah, we love football, we know that, but without football, you know, uh, uh, without an education, football wouldn't be there. So, you know, like, that was the only school that really talked to me about academics. That's why I chose to go to Central State. And having those coaches there, knowing how much success they've had, whether it's in college or in the pros, I got to think that had a big impact uh, on your decision. Am I wrong? Yeah, yo, you're definitely right. Um, well, when I, before before we left, before we left, um, I had an evaluation with uh, Coach uh, Coach being Coach, and um, you know he's a he's a he's a seven time pro bowler. He's he's like uh, you know if anyone knows the NFL is this guy. And he told me like he told me there's nothing more you can do in college football. He said that you have the skill set that a lot of guys doesn't possess. You have the strength, the speed, the hands, and everything. So that was that what made me uh, want to pursue an NFL career. And Davon, just this past season, you had about 63 receptions, 970 yards, and eight touchdowns. Is this correct? Yes. That's that's pretty impressive, man. Now, uh, any chance you could tell us about that very first college football touchdown that you recorded? Oh uh, yeah. Uh, well, you know, um, when I when I got to Central State, you know, being from Los Angeles and and going to a, a state like Ohio, it was different. So I stayed in like a box. Like you know, I didn't really want to talk to anyone. I just wanted to go there, go to school, and play football. And like you know, it was it was, I was different from everyone else that was out there in Ohio. Um, so we had a game against a school called Urbana. Uh, university and uh, they they won our division like three years in a row. These guys was, like they had a great offense, they had a great quarterback, and they had great receivers. And they was like a fourteen point. Uh, uh, they, they we didn't have a we couldn't stand a chance or anything to these guys. We actually had um we actually had uh well we had them at halftime then they came back with a two score performance so we were down by the uh, fourth quarter and I scored I scored uh, off a 50 yard uh, uh, bomb and like uh, set it up for us to have to come back win over uh, overdog it doesn't get much better than that for a wide receiver does it yeah no no it does all right, Davon. Uh, can you tell us about uh, you know you, you are a 2012 you you are a 2012 unanimous All American Great Lakes Valley uh, Conference Offensive Player of the Year, first team All GLVC, and of course the one that sticks out most of all, Ohio Sportsnet Offensive Player of the Year. What do those uh, awards mean to you? Oh, they are. It means a lot to me, uh, but not just for me. It means a lot for my team because. Uh, we haven't had we haven't had like uh, a big player 
since uh, a guy named Hugh Douglas. And uh, Hugh Douglas was a uh, first round draft pick. Oh, yeah. Uh, Philadelphia. Pro Bowler, yeah. Yeah, he went to uh, Central State too. And we haven't had one of those in a long time. So when, when I was there, the co the, our coaches were stressed like, man, who's going to make, who's going to step up? Who's going to make the big play when we need it? Who's going to be that guy? And I can safely say that that guy was me. You know, I always right, rose to the occasion, but I, I wouldn't have been able to do none of that if it wasn't for the team that I had. Man, we had some great players. We had a great offensive line. We had, we had a good quarterback, you know, so it was, it all fall in, fell into place. All right, Davon, let's say there's an NFL general manager out there listening to this interview for some reason. Why would they want Davon Ross, 6'2", 215-pound wide receiver out of uh, Central State University on their team? Man, because I'm a, I'm a, I, can, I, can, I can do a lot, man. Like, I can block, I can catch, I can run the routes, I can outrun a defender, you know, I can learn offenses. Fast, man, I, I bring a lot to the table. You know, I, I'm not a hazard. I wouldn't get into any trouble like a lot of guys. You know, I just stay out the way and do what I have to do. And, Davon, if, uh, if you would compare yourself to an NFL player currently playing, who do you think that would be and why? Okay, well, well okay, I, I, had a, uh, I read an interview with NFL Marks. Uh, and it was about me, and they, the headline was the next Michael Crabtree. And, you know, I, when I read it, I do, like, why are they calling me Michael Crabtree? Why are they calling me a lot? Like, why are they calling me the next Michael Crabtree? So I, I, I looked at a lot of his stuff, and I looked at a lot of my stuff, and it was a lot of comparison between the two. So I would have to go with Michael Crabtree. He's like, we like the a, a exact same height and same speed. I'm a little faster, but... <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so so I gotta think it felt pretty good. You know, you're like, whoa, what, why Michael Crabtree first off? You take a look at his tape and then you see all these, uh, you know, similarities. That I gotta think, you're like, man, I can, I can do that. Yeah. Chris Shanfell talking with Davon Ross, 2014 NFL draft prospect. And Davon, in high school, you were a part of the same conference that had NFL talents such as Broncos safety Raheem Moore, former Lions wide receiver Titus Young, and uh, you know USC wide receiver Marquise Lee, who may just be the first wide receiver chosen in this year's draft. Yeah. Does it encourage you at all seeing these guys, you know, have the success that they've had? Oh yeah, man. Um, that was, I can say, I can honestly say, seeing these guys uh, ripping up in the Pac-12, ripping up in the NFL, really motivated me to get back on, the, uh, like, help me get back on the field because, like, I, like, like you said, like Titus Young, man, like we actually played at the same high school at University High School, and uh, Raheem Moore, he played for Dorsey, and I played for Nam. It was a cross town rivalry, and to see them guys like Marquise Lee, Robert Woods, DeAnthony Thomas. We all played in the same conference, and I actually led that conference in receiving yards and receiving touchdowns. So it's like, you know, like, wow, like, man, these are the same guys that I played in high school. So I know if they can do it, I can definitely do it. Go ahead and say it, man. You're better than these guys. Nah, <laughs> man. Marquise Lee man, is going to be the first wide receiver taken, man. He's uh, a speed. He's, he, he, he's the total package, man. And Robert Woods, he's doing his thing in Buffalo, man. I have nothing but respect for these guys, man. Hey, that's great to hear. I was just trying to catch you on that one, man. Uh, so what, <laughs> what is next for Davon Ross? What's next for you, man? Man, just the NFL combine and then the draft, man. I'm going to I'm gonna surprise everyone who's been, like, criticizing my speed, you know, like a lot of guys talking about the speed factor. Uh, but I'm going to surprise a lot of people, man. Shout out to K-Ron Conright. All right, so, you know, you mentioned it. You got an invite from the 2014 NFL uh, Combine. You'll be entering the 2014 NFL Draft. Uh, I know it's a lot to take in, but how excited are you for all this to take place? Uh, man, I'm really excited, man, because this really feels like a dream come true. Um, you know, um, man, like, I've, I've dreamed this moment, man. Like, that's why no one can tell me anything about this moment because I'm going to, you only get one chance for this, man. You only get one chance to perform, and I'm going to perform at the highest level as I always does. 
Yeah, that's great to hear. And uh, final question for you, Davon, and it's a tough one. It's a tough question to answer. But uh, do you have confidence that you will, that you would indeed be drafted at some point in this draft? And if you aren't, if you are not drafted but signed as an undrafted free agent, uh, would that just be another chip added to your so- added to your shoulder? Uh, well, man, there's no doubt in my mind that I'm going to uh, get drafted. I know I'm going to get drafted, man. Like, it's just, it's just time, man. But if, per se, I don't, then yes, man. It's just another, it's just another way to uh, tell my story, man. Just like defeat the cruises of the world, guys like that, man. Hey, Davon, I, I, you know, I love the confidence that you have, man. And uh, like I said, getting ready for this interview, seeing what you've gone through, uh, I, I could just see that this is going to be a huge success story in the NFL. And I really can't thank you enough for your time. It really has been a true pleasure, man. Thanks, man. Thanks. I appreciate it. Hey, hope we can stay in touch. And uh, best of luck, man. Take care. Uh, you too.